Are you telling me that you built a time machine? No, Mr. McFly, I did not build a time machine. God did. Let me make this clear from the get go. Death is not our friend that ushers us into the presence of God the moment that we die. Death is our enemy. It slowly kills us, it ends our life at the death event, and holds us in the death state. In this video, I will be focusing on aspect three, the death state. Today I'm going to bring you four truths concerning death, and I'm going to bring you a bonus concerning the rich man and Lazarus. We're going to see how death is time travel. We're going to see how death is likened to sleep. We're going to see that the dead are literally dead. The dead dead, not the living dead. And we'll see how belief in the literal death of Jesus is essential for you to realize your salvation. Through this study, we will see that God, even in death, is merciful to the dead. Many years ago, I watched a TV preacher. He was talking about the stubborn Pharaoh that opposed Moses in the time of the Exodus. He said that this Pharaoh died, and since then, for about 3,000 years, he has been tormented in hell. But then he says that this Pharaoh will be raised and judged at the great white throne. But there's a huge contradiction there. It would seem that this Pharaoh, if he is undergoing judgment in hell and torment right now, and has been for 3,000 years, that he has already been judged. So what is the point of raising him at the great white throne to then judge him again? That does not make sense, and that is not what the scriptures teach concerning death. Here we have the handy dandy Eonian Times chart, which you can find on my website, biggestjesus.com. Feel free to use it, share it, study it, learn it. It's very important to understand the Eonian Times. It shows us God's plan for his creation. We can use this chart to show us how death is time travel for Pharaoh, and we'll use the Apostle Paul as an example of a believer. If we have Pharaoh dying in at this point of time, before the death and resurrection of Christ, after the flood, somewhere in this area where he and Moses battled to to toe. He died in the sea chasing after Moses and the Israelite. Christianity says that he has been dead and suffering and tormented in hell all this time up until where we currently are now, so about 3,000 years. But in reality, what the scriptures teach, and we'll get into this in just a minute and some other scriptures that prove the dead are dead, if we look at the point at which Pharaoh died, the scriptures teach that he will be resurrected at the great white throne, which will be towards the end of Eon 4, which has the thousand years, plus the final final battle and the great white throne. So Pharaoh, from the moment of his death until the moment of his resurrection at the great white throne, at the resurrection of judging, he will have no experience. He is literally dead. He is not experiencing anything. He is not suffering torment. The moment of death till the moment of resurrection to him are immediate consecutive moments. So from his experience, he has traveled through time. It will be at least 4,000 years if you figure from his death to now is about 3,000. Then we have the thousand years between. Then the great white throne so at least 4,000 years are going to pass by while he is in the death state experiencing nothing. Now let's look at an example of a believer. We have the Apostle Paul who died within a short time after the death and resurrection of Christ. He will be resurrected at the return of Christ at the end of this present wicked eon in which Satan is the god of this eon. So the Apostle Paul will be resurrected to immortality at that time but he has been dead for close to 2,000 years so from his experience just like pharaohs from the moment of his death until the moment of his resurrection he experiences nothing from the moment of his death and the moment of his resurrection to him those are two immediate consecutive moments so from his experience he has traveled through time close to 2,000 years depending upon when Christ returns <laughs> have you ever had one of those really really good nights of sleep I know they're pretty rare your head hits the pillow and the next thing you know you smell the coffee that is what death is likened to in the scriptures that great night of sleep where eight hours or ten hours goes by and you have no recollection of it nothing happens you don't get up to pee you don't toss and turn all night you hit the pillow you wake up let's take a look at a couple of examples in the scriptures where death is likened to sleep in our first passage, John 11, 11 through 14, Jesus himself likens sleep to death. Jesus is saying to his disciples, Lazarus, our friend, has found repose, but I am going that I should be awakening him out of sleep. The disciples then said to him, Lord, if he has repose, he shall be saved. Now Jesus had made a declaration concerning his death, yet they suppose that he is saying it concerning the repose of sleep. Jesus then said to them, with boldness then, Lazarus died. 
Then we have Job 3, 11 through 16, where Job is wishing that he had been a stillborn child to save him from all the misery he experienced in life. Why did I not die from the womb, from the belly come forth and breathe my last? For what reason did two knees anticipate me, and why the two breasts that I could suck? For now I would lie and be quiet, I would sleep, then there would be rest for me. With kings and counselors of the earth, the builders of desert tombs for themselves, or with chiefs who had gold, who were filling their houses with silver? Or why was I not like a buried stillborn child, like babes who have not seen light? Oh my God! I know it can be very comforting to think that our dead loved ones are in heaven with God and with Jesus. But that's just not true. That's not what the scriptures teach. I'm going to give you several scripture passages that reveal to us the truth that the dead are the dead dead, not the living dead. In John 3.13, we read the words of Jesus as he was speaking to the Pharisee Nicodemus from the Concordant Literal New Testament. And no one has ascended into heaven except he who descends out of heaven, the Son of Mankind, who is in heaven. So here we have Jesus telling the Pharisee Nicodemus that no one has ascended except Jesus himself. In the previous passage, Jesus was speaking before his death and resurrection. In Acts 2, 34 through 35, we read the words from the Apostle Peter after Jesus' death and resurrection. For David did not ascend into the heavens, yet he is saying, Said the Lord to my Lord, sit at my right, till I should be placing thine enemies for a footstool for thy feet. So it's clear from the scriptures that before and after the death and resurrection of Jesus, no one else has ascended into heaven. Psalm 6-5 was written by David from the concordant version of the Old Testament. For in death there is no remembrance of you, and the unseen who shall acclaim you. There is nobody who is dead who is remembering God, and there is nobody in the unseen who is acclaiming God. The dead are doing nothing. Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, apart from Jesus, of course, wrote this in Ecclesiastes 9, 5, and 10. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know nothing whatsoever. For there is no doing or devising or knowledge or wisdom in the unseen where you are going. Speaking of the dead, they know nothing whatsoever. If people are in heaven with God and Jesus, they will obviously know something. If there are people alive now in hell, they would obviously know something. But Solomon assures us there is nothing happening in death. In Psalm 115, 17, we read, The dead cannot praise Yah, nor all those descending into stillness. If there are dead people who are actually alive in heaven, they would be praising God. In Luke 27, 37 through 38, Jesus says something very shocking concerning God's relationship with the dead. Now that the dead are rousing, even Moses divulges at the thorn bush, as he is terming the Lord the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now God is he not of the dead, but of the living, for all to him are living. At this time when Moses was speaking, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were dead. And Jesus tells us that the only way that God can be their God is if they are alive, because he is not the God of the dead. So the only way for God to be Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's God is for them to be resurrected from the dead. So this is proof that there is a resurrection from the dead. Now let's look at verse 38 a little more closely because I've had some people bring this up as a question regarding this passage. The issue that people have brought up to me regarding Luke 20, 37 through 38, where it says, Now God is he not of the dead, but of the living, for all to him are living. Their question is, how does that jive with Romans 14, 8 through 9? Let's read through that quickly. For both, if we should be living, to the Lord are we living. And if we should be dying, to the Lord are we dying. Then, both if we should be living, and if we should be dying, we are the Lord's. For for this Christ died and lives, that he should be Lord of the dead as well as of the living. So the question is, how can God not be the God of the dead, but Jesus is the Lord of the dead? And it comes down to the meaning of God and Lord. These are two different words in the Greek. God comes from the Greek theos and means placer. Lord comes from the Greek kurios and means master or owner. So we see that God, as the placer, is not placing the dead. The dead are not being moved around by God in heaven or in hell or anywhere else. They are dead. That is how he is not the God of the dead. He is not moving them. We see in Acts 17:28 that it speaks of our relationship to God. And Paul says, For in him we are living and moving and are. Apart from God, we are not moving. We are not thinking. We are not doing anything. Therefore, as the placer, he is not doing anything with the dead. Therefore, he is not the God of the dead. 
But in regard to Jesus being the Lord of the dead, meaning the master or the owner, he is the owner of all of the dead, the master of all of the dead. We read in 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 6, For there is one God and one mediator of God and mankind, a man, Christ Jesus, who is giving himself a correspondent ransom for all, the testimony in its own eras. Jesus paid the ransom for all through his death and resurrection. He didn't just buy the living, he bought the dead. He bought everything in the universe. That is how he is the Lord of the dead and the living, while God is not the God of the dead. At the end of this video, I will link you to a video where I explain how all to God are living. Everyone has been saved by the work of Jesus Christ, his death and his resurrection. But very few actually realize the truth of their salvation that already exists. And a realization of this truth requires believing certain facts about Jesus. Here they are. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Now I am making known to you, brethren, the evangel which I bring to you, which also you accepted, and which also you stand through which also you are saved, if you are retaining what I said in bringing the evangel to you, outside and accept you believe feignedly. For I give over to you among the first what also I accepted, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was entombed, and that he has been roused the third day according to the scriptures. The Apostle Paul shared the Evangel, otherwise known as the Good News, with the people of Corinth. And he stated to them the facts about Jesus that they had to believe to realize their salvation that already existed. And in realizing this, they would be sealed with the Holy Spirit and begin to enjoy the benefits that came from the salvation that already existed. And these facts that Paul laid out that they had to believe were that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, He was entombed, that He has been roused the third day according to the Scriptures. But many get tripped up on this first aspect where it said that Christ died because many do not believe that Jesus actually died. They believe between the time of his death and resurrection, he was in heaven, or many believe that he was in hell during this time. Christ was dead, just as literally dead as Pharaoh is today and as the Apostle Paul is today. And Christ also experienced some time travel, even though his was very short-lived, only three days. He died, was literally dead for three days, and was roused the third day. These are the facts that are essential to believe to realize your salvation. We must believe all these facts. None of them are negotiable. I remember several years ago, I was speaking to a man in a nursing home, and he was lying down on his bed. He was bedridden. He was an older gentleman, and we were discussing Christ, and he seemed to be believing what I was saying, so I asked him, do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? He said, yes. And then I asked him, do you believe that Jesus was raised from the dead three days after he was crucified? And he said, no. So him believing the first fact was a good start, but because he didn't believe in the resurrection, this man was not a true believer. He did not realize the salvation that was already his. So these facts are non-negotiable. We have to believe these to realize our salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's bonus time. Thank you, Teddy. As promised, here is your bonus concerning the rich man and Lazarus. Recall that in Luke 20, 38, Jesus said God is not the God of the dead. And one of those dead named by Jesus is Abraham, along with his son Isaac and his grandson Jacob. But in Luke 16, 19 through 31, we read the story of the rich man and Lazarus, where Abraham is very active as he interacts with the rich man and Lazarus. So, is Abraham currently alive or dead? The story of the rich man and Lazarus is a parable. Abraham is very, very dead, but will become alive at the resurrection. Then God will be his God again, placing him here and there just as he did when Abraham was alive. The story of the rich man and Lazarus is not literal, it is a parable. If you have benefited from this video, please poke that like button. And to see how to God all are living, watch this video next.